Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This video is all about scarf tying and all of the styling tips that I've learned over the last year of designing my scarf line. There are so many great videos on YouTube showing you how to do intricate sailors knots with scarves, but what I really want to start this video off with is showing you how to properly volumize and style your scarf so that even the simplest knot done quickly on your way out the door to work will look fabulous. So first of all what I want to show you is how how to even out the ends to get a really clean professional look. You can see everything is very square that way and you can really show off the ends of the scarves. It's also a great way to show off the volume of the scarf itself. So my scarves are 200 centimeters by 90 centimeters or 70 inches by 35 inches. So you get a lot of volume towards the ends. If you want to lessen how much volume you can see, what you can do is go ahead and do the bohemian styling as I like to think of it and essentially just let the scarf fall naturally and just tug on the ends a little bit to create a nice point and then just go ahead and loop it around your neck same way as before and what you get is something that's a little bit more carefree and deconstructed and you can see more of the edge of the scarf going up it has a little bit more angles to it I really like the way this shows off the fringe at the end of the scarf it's a bit more of a modern look than the traditional tassels on pashminas moving into the tying part of this video let me show you all of my favorite ways to tie scarves the first one is the English tie. I wore this one a lot at university because I saw it around so much in London, in the city especially, underneath a very simple black wool coat. It was just the look at the time and I continue to wear it to this day because I think it just looks so put together and I love how easy it is. You just go ahead and loop it through and you're done. The second has been a favorite of mine for several years now. It's the pretzel. It looks harder than it is. You just pull one side through and then from the other other direction you stick the other end through creating a bit of a directional difference in the ends and it creates a really nice little looped effect I like the way it separates the two ends of the scarves it looks just quite different from lots of other styles that I've seen over the years it's a favorite of mine you probably have seen it in a lot of my videos if you're subscribed to my channel thirdly we've got a simple knot when I'm in a rush this is probably my ultimate go-to because I think it just looks very polished and ladylike so I just go ahead and create a loop box behind my neck and then I stick each of the ends through and this is one that especially benefits from fluffing and volumizing so you want to go ahead and make sure that the seams of the scarves are tucked under and you're pushing the body of the scarf through a little bit to create some volume around your neck to give you that cozy look Fourthly, we've got the Hollywood Knot. This one is really nice because you can easily wear a tank top with it and it'll keep you so warm. So this one, you just want to go ahead and loop it at the back and then bring the ends forward and create a simple knot and then fluff everything up as much as you can. It really benefits from a lot of volumizing. You can see here, you can peek a little bit at the label. You can unstitch the label on any scarf. Mine are really easy to do that with. But with this next style, the Faux Infinity, you may want to keep the label on because what it essentially enables you to do is to create an infinity scarf just by pulling through one of the ends until it's snug and then just hiding the ends at the back of your head and it requires no knotting which is great because then you won't damage your scarf and then you just go ahead and conceal the ends pull it around fluff it up and no one would ever guess that this is not a true infinity scarf what I especially like about this style and other styles with short ends is that you can wear it with a really nice top and it'll show off your outfit fully and the scarf will still keep your neck warm. Next up is the thespian. Now I did a lot of theater in high school and all of these scarf tying techniques have playful names because I love naming things, but you essentially just toss one end to the back with a front end tuck through and you create just a really easy breezy, slightly dramatic look. Number seven really requires no explanation. It's what I do when I'm wearing summer dresses in Hawaii. I still like to have a little something to protect from the air conditioning or the breeze and to add a little bit of elegance to an outfit. So I just drape the scarf over my shoulders. I like one over the shoulder and one over the elbow. I think it creates a really nice classic look. Number eight is the Paris knot. Every time I've gone to Paris, I see a lot of people twisting their scarves. And I really like how this actually minimizes the volume 
volume of the scarf to allow you to create a knot that's not too visible and creating a lot of bulk towards the chest area. So I just loop it behind the neck and then I do a quick easy knot and then you go ahead and just fluff everything up because it wouldn't be truly elegant and French looking if you just left it at that. So I like to sort of tilt it to the side and do a little bit of fluffing around the neck so it's not too tight. Number nine is the Palm Springs Twist. This one has a bit of a desert vibe to it. You just go ahead and do a bit of twisting, two loops, and then go ahead and tuck in one of the ends. Tighten it quite a bit. You want this one to be quite close to the face. And then if you can angle one of the ends, I think it looks really chic, and just tuck in the side of that end into the scarf so that no one can see it. And the nice thing about having a lot of texture to your scarves, like something with a natural fiber in it is that when you tuck in ends they will actually usually stay put so I really love that about cashmere silk alpaca really any natural knit that will hopefully be lightweight that way you can experiment with all of these styles without getting overheated Number 10 is really easy. It is the hidden knot, so you go ahead and loop it behind your head, bring the ends forward, create a simple knot just like for the Parisian knot, but then what you go ahead and do is you pull forward the first layer and tuck it over your knot, and it hides the knot so beautifully, and this will stay put all day. You just go ahead and pull it out until you create a nice loose look that covers the bulk of the knot. Number 11 is the Wall Street tie. This one's a little bit 80s. I I love its masculine edge, but the scarf itself is so flouncy and feminine that it creates a nice combination and interest. So you go ahead and loop it through several times so that you create that knot for the end to go through. Pull it around, through, upwards, and then tuck it back down to create a Windsor tie knot style. And you wanna really volumize this one really nicely around where the knot happens so that you don't have a big chunk of fabric there. Just pull the ends up and you'll create a nice tie effect that's still really pretty. Bringing me to my next, which is my current favorite style. So number 12 is the Instagram braid. This one is so fantastic because it looks complicated, but it's really easy, okay? So let me reverse it for you and show you the steps. First of all, we start with the loop behind the head and the ends forward. Then you go ahead and twist the middle section, holding it in your hand, pull one end through and the other end through that middle loop, and then go ahead and pull the ends down. And you'll be surprised that you just created a braided effect. It looks a bit like a herringbone braid. And if you go ahead and fluff up those braid sections, pulling down on the lower section, then you go ahead and create a really nice structured effect. It just looks really pretty. It has a nice flatness to it as well, so I really like that it has volume without creating a lot of bulk. Second to last, this one is easy, but I wouldn't be doing a scarf tying video that's based on real lifestyles that I wear without showing you. So this is the office shrug. It's what I do when I'm freezing at work. All I do is drape it over my shoulders, pull one end around, and then with the other end, you just wanna go ahead and tuck it under. I like that this still looks stylish, but mostly I like that it covers my shoulders from air conditioning if I'm wearing short sleeves. And then finally, in last place, we've got the Ascot Loop. This one is perfect for a day at the races, but it's also perfect for a day at work. All you do is go ahead and loop it around and around like you did for the Wall Street tie. Then you bring it up towards your face, pull it through, but instead of tucking it in like for the Wall Street tie, you're actually just going to drape it over and fluff it up. And you want to hope for even ends on this one or close to even so that you can see the ends of the scarf just sort of draping together. And it really helps to pull apart the knot a little bit so you don't have a lot of bulk there towards your face. And then go ahead and volumize the sides a little bit as well so that everything looks nice and even. And one of the nice perks of pulling apart the fabric like that and volumizing it properly is that I find that it will really help the style to stay put all day long. So I hope you found this video helpful. I really enjoyed sharing the different styles that I like to wear for scarves. I wear them almost every day. They've really become a part of my personal style and that's why I decided to start my own line of scarves. So if you'd like to check that out, I will link it at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next installment on style.